Hey folks, there are a million ways to make a portfolio and this is one of them. So here's the definition of what a portfolio is and commonly artists will use this to either get a job or get into a specific school or an internship. Hopefully the big idea is you realize that the work you present in your portfolio matches the need of the position. So with these three essentials in mind, you should get all of your content into a folder on your computer, somewhere easily accessible. And if you can name these things, that would make your life a lot easier. But the main idea is try to get organized first. So now it's sketchbook time. And what I've done is I've illustrated a bunch of thumbnails that will represent the 10 page layout. I'll go build this digitally, but I'm thinking about the format of the page and you know the general size and orientation and layout of all of the images that I'll include. So in Photoshop, I'm gonna settle for a print layout, eight and a half by 11 or A4. I'm going to also turn on artboards, choose the landscape orientation, and title it as Portfolio. Now notice that I collapse the artboard in the Layers menu, and I'm going to go use the Artboards tool, which is underneath the Move tool. And you can either click the plus sign or you can go and make a bunch of duplicates, but ideally I want to get 10 pages laid out. So now it's time to go tie all of these pages together by coming in with some kind of a graphic shape as a background visual element. I'm also gonna change the color and I'm gonna choose something to make my artwork stand out. What I'm using is the marquee tool on every single artboard on that very first layer and I'm using the paint bucket to fill. Don't forget, I have my thumbnail sketches in my sketchbook off camera and I'm using that to help me decide where to put objects. In this segment what I'm doing is using a contrasting color with the shapes and I'm putting those as picture frames on every single one of the pages. Keep in mind that in the layers menu I'm constantly going back and making sure that I have the correct artboard selected and again I'm, I have a reference on my sketchbook off camera but I have an idea of where I'm going to put a text box and I have an idea of the general size and shape of each of the boxes. I'll later go back and populate everything with artwork, but I just want to start things out by getting everything situated first. So a few other things to note is that I like to use a text box with a lorem ipsum just so it fills the area. And then I also like to use a contrasting red because it's so different than, you know, the background colors of the paper. So when I start populating everything, if it's not bright red, then I know that I've already done my job. Now it's time to go and work on one of the pages, hopefully to give you some principles and ideas of how to get this done. Um, what I'll do is I'll get all of the artwork in there and I like to rename it in the layer menu. I'll also duplicate that artwork and put it into a folder just so I have an extra copy just in case. When it's time to actually position the artwork, I'll go and drag the layers around and put some stuff together. I'll rotate it accordingly and I'll apply a clipping mask so that the original artwork will clip to that right red box that I originally had set up. Later, I'll go back and I'll adjust the brightness and the contrast and I'll also go and clean up some of the artwork. So if I have to use like the, the clone tool or the patch tool, I'll go and hide some of the details that I don't want to be visible. So I originally had intended to have three images on this page, but as I'm moving artwork around, I'm starting to realize the, I guess the, the proportion and the shape of the, you know, the drawings that I have, they're not really going to fit. So this is a good time for you to go and, you know, modify your approach. So in this segment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and change the size and shape of that one red box. And then I'm going to duplicate that again. And what I can go back and do is make an additional panel of artwork. And you know, if you want to get it perfect, go and use some guidelines and drag those around. So when you use the shape tool, you can make another one and then you can go and find that original piece of artwork and get it to clip appropriately. 
and uh, it's just a nifty tool to be able to go and make things happen. So really, this is all the work. What you want to do when you're constructing your portfolio is you want to be thoughtful, you want to have some clear images, you want to organize everything so it's easy for people to see. And all this dragging around of stuff and moving around of layers, that's, that's going to take the majority of the time once you figure out what you want to show. Make sure that you include your name um, somewhere at the bottom. And it's also a good idea to leave a caption, perhaps on the left or the right side, so people know what they're looking at. Uh, it doesn't hurt to go and add details about the artwork. All right, so in order to save this, what I'd like to do is to go to the File menu, Export, and I'm going to do Artboards to PDF. When that happens, uh, you get this dialog box. So what I'm going to do is choose a location, and I'm going to give this a name. So I'll call this like Final Portfolio. I like to select Contents Only for the artboards. I do not include the overlapping areas, because sometimes I draw outside the paper. Um, I like to unclick export selected artboards because I want all of them this time around. Uh, but you could shift click or control click the ones that you do want and then export those. I'll include the background, I'll change it to a, a JPEG, the 12. And uh, I'm going to unclick reverse page order because I want them to export pages 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And you know it's the first one because it's on the top left. I'm going to hit the run button. And this usually takes a minute or so, so maybe we can just time lapse this part. But once it's done doing its thing, then you can get your finished PDF and hopefully it opens up automatically. All right, so now that we're all done, here is the final portfolio. <laughs> okay, so this is working out nicely. Uh, notice that the very first uh, image is at page one and it goes to page two, three, and four. Um, everything looks pretty reasonable, it's visible. My contact info is on each one of the, the pages below and it looks all right. So I guess as we close out this video, uh, one of the most important things to consider is that a portfolio is only as good as its weakest drawing. So if we look at any of these pages, um, in fact, I think my life drawings are kind of weak, um, maybe this is as good as the entire portfolio is. So what I should do is to go and spend a lot of time doing additional life drawing. And what will happen is, is I'll take these, you know, these are I think 60 second gestures. Um, I'll take these guys out and replace them with other 60 second gestures that are better. Or if this life drawing is not really working for me, um, and even though I wanted to show process right here, maybe what I want to do is to try something with charcoal um, where I could do a much better job of it and then to get that in here by swapping this out. A portfolio is an ongoing project that you're always adapting, especially if you're going to make one specifically for like an internship or a job or a school that you plan to go to. You want to include the artwork that represents you as a good candidate for that position. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching. Bye.